five reasons why real racetracks hate drifting. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what point was I even trying to make? I don't think you had one. I've never had a point really, let's be honest. Hey everybody, it's the day after BDC and we thought we'd have a little walk around the track. We've had the UK's best drifters here for the full weekend. So we're going to take a little walk around and see what happens. Basically, this is going to be five reasons why real racetracks hate drifting. A follow on from our last video. If you've not seen it, there'll be a thing up. Which side, Ren? This side. Your left that hand. That side. Your yeah. left hand. There you go. Yay! There'll be a thing here to watch that one. But yeah, these are the best guys in the business and we're going to go and see what damage we've caused. Jeek, I think you're moaning because it looks lovely from here. No, 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 no. It looks perfect. I'm absolutely not moaning. This is not a video of us moaning about drifting and have obviously oh, drift okay. drifting happens here. It's our business model. What we're trying to do is educate people as to why other drift tracks might not let them on ah. or what they need to do in order to get on and what they need to be prepared to tidy up potentially after an event so let's go down onto track and have a look because you're right it does it from here it still looks nice the grass is getting a bit yeah. long we need to cut that again but other than that it's, it still looks good so i reckon let's go have a look and see it's not as good as it looks from up here it's like a drift car it's fine from like 30 yeah. foot okay right let's follow me Educate, don't remonstrate, kids. Remonstrate? What even does that mean? I don't even know what that means. You're so posh. <laughs> what does remonstrate mean? Just so you keep going and I'm going to take videos of your bum. <laughs> remonstrate, I think it means complain. Oh, I'm good at that. Yeah, you like that. Sounds a bit like menstruate, so I assumed it was something to do with moaning. <laughs> Excuse me, that's discriminatory. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> So where are we going first? We'll go for right here. Look! All this lovely lime mortar, which yeah. is, is actually lime mortar, not white paint, David Egan. Yeah, David Egan. I got to punch David Egan in the face at, at, at the weekend for uh, painting our track, but yeah, the lime mortar, it makes the place look amazing for the event, but this stuff, even though it's just lime mortar, it takes a few months to go away. Yeah, because I see over there are some of the FR Legends Day, Circles oh, yeah, in the ground. Yeah, and they were March. I put them on the track. So yeah. March to end of May here. That's two months that they've been there. And this is a high traffic area. Yeah, and this it's also that was a really quick coating of lime mortar as well. Yeah. So this gets a lot of a lot of use this area. So it does go away faster. But like these lines here and the sort of the ones that like in here, bits that don't get used very often, it doesn't really go away. Are you suggesting all our drivers aren't going to hit this outer line all the time? No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. So I suppose that's reason number one. Fucking lines everywhere. It's fine for us because this is our business, but imagine if you had a prestigious racetrack. Would you really want this mess? And I know that, I know that David Egan has had to tidy up some of this style of mess before and it costs about two grand uh, to get this place basically steam cleaned Freaky. so yeah reason number one why racetracks hate drifting so let's go find number two we don't have far to walk do we no no <laughs> it's this gravel trap isn't it it's, so we made a decision this year uh-huh and we decided that we would get this gravel track looking mint before we started okay but that we wouldn't address it throughout the event because what happens is the cars drop in here as you can see and then they smash this gravel up the hill towards the spectators mm -hmm. hence we've got spectator catch netting in there it's not to catch the spectators it's to catch the stones before. Oh, from flying into the spectators yeah, it's not to catch people falling over the fence no if you want to go across there unless you weigh about as much as kenny then you're not really going to uh, end up anywhere else apart from on the track yeah so this year, rather than pull it all back at the end of Saturday and fill it all back in for Sunday, we just left it. Mm -hmm. I say Sunday there was a lot less stones flying up the hill. However, the hole is really yeah, deep. Yeah, so there wasn't as much gravel flying because there wasn't as much gravel. Yeah, basically there was no gravel at all. But yeah, look big. just how deep this is. Oh, a big like, drop here. A, a reference. Like, For reference, yes, the, empirical measurement. S10, it's about the same depth as an S10. Wow. 
it's getting close to undercutting the track, so this will have to be addressed immediately. I'll make it the digger out this afternoon. Yeah, I think actually. it sounds like an, <laughs> an opportunity for Digsy to come out. Um, but so are you just going to drag all, this material back? Yeah, from but, well, I'm going to have to do what I can with a digger, yeah. but then... How do you get the stuff that's in the grass out? Kenny gets it by hand with a rake. Ah, this is lost then, really, There's, isn't it? It's, that's the thing, we can't leave it there because it makes a cut in the grass nigh impossible. Yeah, it's either going to kill the grass or it's going to stop you from being able to cut, cut it. Cut it, yeah, what happens is because Kenny throws the fly mow down here, it's sort of at that angle, so he has to wear basically full body armour the first few cuts after this because <laughs> there's just stones getting fired up in his direction. Oh, bless him. But yeah, like this is like three feet deep here now and a, a foot gone. Yep. So, yeah. reason number two. <laughs> well, imagine you had a really nice racetrack yeah. and you had, let's say, touring cars on the next day mm -hmm. or some saloon racing or something cool, yeah. single seater, open wheeled stuff. Imagine that on the edge of your track. No Wouldn't good wouldn't get away with that. Go-kart tracks especially. This, oh. would, this would close a go-kart track down because you're not allowed to have sudden drops or sudden yeah. raises off the edge of the track for obvious reasons because you go up and over. You tip it. You'd, be, you'd be triple barrel roll. Yeah. So, so reason number two. Yeah, that that's just chaos. <laughs> just the edge of the track. And these are the best drivers in the in the UK. These aren't, you know, this hasn't been created by water damage like a lot of people. Oh, it's too much it's water damage that's actually making the problem. That is not water damage. We had a lot of water <laughs> over the weekend. No, no. <laughs> but that is all cars. The best drivers in the UK. And this is the line, a foot, foot and a half away. Yep. And look how deep they were. They were. That was mostly Hayden Cruikshank from Hayden, memory. Hayden, that's like... <laughs> eight, what are people eight, doing over here? Eight feet out. <laughs> now somebody's got out here, look. <laughs> Somebody's made it to here. Yeah, but it doesn't. The, well, although they, they have made the, it all the way back on yeah, again. They were not. They were not on the right line. No. All the way here. No. But yeah, like as I said, we're not complaining. We are complaining, but not because we want something to happen about it. We just want you to know why the, your local racetrack will not let you book a drift day. Reason number two. Let's go find reason number three. Reason number three. Kerbs. We spent well, pretty much all week painting these curbs to make them look sweet for the live stream, which has never happened a little bit. Ooh. Another story for another day. Uh, but yeah, and they get absolutely wrecked. This was only like three days ago, three drift days ago that we painted this curb, and it's absolutely lathered in time. So and what that, should a curb look like? The cab should look like that one over there, look, that so we look. painted. And we never oh, he's destroyed. nice, yeah. He's nice. That one's perfect. So that's what they all look like, but even just driving over them with hot tyres, because the, sh the sticky tyres that these guys are using, yeah. they just mark everything. But, again, we're not complaining about this. But, if you had a touring car track, or something else a bit more prestigious, that's going to upset you. And yeah. I can tell you from experience, when we used to drift at Knock Hill, that really upset not kill when you went on the curbs and did a skid. So and I fully understand why. <laughs> it sucks painting them. It's expensive and it makes the place look ass. It's quite time consuming as well to repaint all this as well as costly. Yeah. As we sort of discussed in our last video, we were like 800 quid for all the paint to do all the curbs. Yeah, and we have small curbs and we're probably not using FIA approved paint like yeah. the, like not kill or somebody might be using. So yeah. That's that's reason number three. And reason number four is literally in the same area. Oof, let's go back. It's right here on this piece of track. Oh, look at this. And I don't know if you can quite make it out here, but the track is furry here. And that is because all of the super sticky tires that the BDC guys use uh. basically leave themselves here. So have you ever wondered why a BDC car has so much lateral grip and has so much speed coming out of a corner, it's because they're literally leaving their tires stuck to the track. Wow. Now, again, let's go, let's say Knock Hill, for example, again, when we used to drift at Knock Hill, we used Duffa Step, the first corner, the entry point was sort of right on the outside, right on the racing line. Now imagine if we did this to the track, and then the next weekend they had, let's say, the super bikes on. Now, super bikes are not gonna enjoy this sort of, uh, grip level change no 
on the entry to the fastest corner on the track. That's assuming the weather's like is today as well. I imagine if it got wet, they, they would basically just be like <laughs> straight off. <laughs> So, and you can see it's not a small area either. It starts like way back here. Oh, lovely. Let me show you exactly where. Oh, hi. It starts like here. Uh huh. And it goes like halfway down the straight there. Yes, that that's you basically can't repair that here. You can't I'm not throw sure that rubber up. We just have to let that, you know, like just come up in little bits and bobs over the next few months, really, don't yeah. we? I'm not sure how that how you would get that. And bear in mind, yeah, look at that. Bear in mind that we had a majority that was wet most of the day. Most yeah. of the weekend was wet. So this is all mostly probably just from the last few battles. This is also, is this not also going to stick into the front tyres of quite a lot of regular drift cars now? That takes me to point number five. Ooh. And the reason that drift tracks, or drifters, sorry, are not particularly enjoyed by normal tracks is what we like to call Westlake sausages. <laughs> now we should probably shouldn't. We should probably just call them semi-slick sausages. Yeah. But this happens, and then ugh, this gets rolled up, yeah. sticks to the front tires of the cars, and then gets launched and sticks to the track somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somewhere else. Yeah. And yeah. well, we have a, we use a street sweeper, as you're probably aware, to clean the track here. Yeah. Again, if you want to see the street sweeper in action and being clean, Kenny has a lovely video. Check that video out. Yeah. Um. The street sweeper cannot pick these up, they're, they're too stuck to the track. What it can do, I tell you a lie, it can pick them up, okay. but only using its tires. <laughs> so what it does is it, it coats the whole tire in these <laughs> fucking sausages, and then when you turn the sweeper to try and turn around on a nice clean bit of track, uh -huh. it leaves it all behind again. Uh. So it's so frustrating. It's the, like, the sweeper sucks at the best of times, but when you're, you're turning around on a clean bit and making it dirty again, it's like, <laughs> oh, why me? <laughs> but so yeah, the, the, those sausages they get everywhere. They're, they're stuck to the wall. They oh. they're going to stick to all our drivers' cars' front wheels for the next like two or three drift days. They're going to give a little bit of a Some vibration. Wobble. Yeah. So again, if you had a, a legit, you know, traditional racetrack, your guys in their you know super serious evos and sub scoobies and that sort of thing are not going to be very happy about you making their wheels feel unbalanced no. due to having debris on the track so that is the five reasons i reckon we very quickly just go over to our other gravel trap and just look at just how deep the guys have managed to dig in there yeah let's do it and then we'll do a little outro follow me well, this one shows up a bit better, I think. Because we've already added concrete into this area to try and stop the edge of the track getting damaged, it shows it considerably more. Wow. The, yeah, I can get my foot in the underhang here now. Are they rock ports? The rock ports, They're mate. cool. Best cool, eh? Yeah, they are cool. Got them straight from my school. Nice. But yeah, you can see we're, you know, we're breaking off bits of the concrete here. And this is all going to need addressed. And just, just to say as well, the reason we're putting the concrete on the edge is so when people do damage the edges of the track, they are damaging the concrete, which costs a fraction of that of the tar. Yes. So we had a few comments asking why we were doing that, and it seemed a bit silly, but that is why. Yes, yes, to stop the edge of the tar getting damaged, so you know we can undercut this. It's a bit more sturdy, it's a bit more uh, long-lasting, whereas if we undercut the tar, it doesn't take long at all for it to, to eat its way backwards and be in the actual track. So. Yeah, I mean, you can see here how deep it's gone. Like, this is part of the original sort of sub base, wow. I think, of stuff that was left here back in the day. Wow. Yeah. So again, the, this was this was immaculate. Did it myself with a digger, which you'll see in a video. Another card did it. of all the cards of this one. You did a really good job of it as well. Did it, it was lovely. And now it's all like over here. You're not getting any of that back. No, like, no chance. Like, there's a lot of it. You can yeah. actually see this clean area here where yeah. the banners have been, and then above it, it's all my planings. Yeah. So we probably lost, I don't know, ten tons of planings yeah. into the grass. Yeah. You can see that the banner shape marks there, and then all around it is all of <laughs> everything that is now on those banners. They took away. Yeah. So I reckon there's probably one more fix in this. Uh, before we need to bring in another 20 tonnes of planings in order to fill this Sounds back good. off again. I know some people commenting that, um, well, what are you doing paying for road planings? 
Um, if anyone has a, a, a source of role playing that's awesome. delivered and free, yeah. that's the thing that I think most people are not going to be able yeah, to Even get. free and a small delivery charge or, yeah. or, a, or a pat on the back or a drift day. Like, geese planings. Yeah, if they're free or cheaper, then we'll take them. We're paying, what, like 150 quid for 21 tons? Yep. So I think that's about industry average. Uh, but if you know anybody or you are that person, get in touch. Get in touch. Duke, you brought me down to this part of the track. Is this something else that's getting an honorary mention? Yeah, a little honorary mention. So obviously the guys want to warm their tyres up, they want to rip the stickers off, they want to get a little bit of grip, and they want to have an area to do burnouts. And they do big burnouts. Ugh. And trying to stop them doing static burnouts was actually proved quite difficult over the weekend. But you can see here we've also left... Oh, uh, more Westlake more, stuff. More Westlake or stuff. Or other semi-slicks are available too. Yeah, other semi-slicks are definitely there. But you can see this whole area now is, is going to have been gripped up. It's going to be extra grippy. In the dry, that'll be extra grippy. And in the wet, it's going to be like an ice rink. People are going to end up oh, up into VFP parking. Yeah, and we do not allow static burnouts under any circumstances, but I can't help feeling that I see a couple of digs in the uh, marks in the track that looks like... Yeah. Things are nearly static at that point. So yeah, there's, there's been a few that are definitely right on the edge of what you can do. There's a pair here, yeah. which we can show you a bit closer up. And people will be thinking, why can't I do static burnout? I like a burnout. We love burnouts at Driftland. But what it does is it heats up a tiny little patch about this size. And you can sort of see it in there. I don't you know can, if you can yeah. on the camera. And it will pick, it melts the tar or the asphalt, and it picks these stones out, ding, 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 one at a time, and eventually you're left with nothing. Yeah. That's why we can't do statics on the track. It takes about six to eight seconds, I'd reckon, before you're starting to physically damage the track on a static. So oh. just don't do statics. Don't. And also fix your oil leaks. Extra honorary mention. <laughs> Look at all these dots <laughs> running up here. Oh, there are loads of them. Look at them everywhere. These are top level cars again. These are cars that are meant to be tuned to the best of British abilities. There's a big a big trough of oil over there as well. Yeah, I mean, that was an incident. Somebody had a, an engine go, uh, and as soon as he realized he had it go, he was off the track. So, you know, that happens on every racetrack. But, yeah, it's not something that we can really con consider a reason no. to hate drifting. No, just for the stop-start nature, I suppose, of drifting, where you're all, you're sitting waiting on the track for quite a while, makes things like these oil leaks and drips end up appearing. Yeah, I mean, this could be, you know, just one tiny little drip from a car, but because they're here, and they're queuing up constantly, back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, we end up with... Well, for us, it's not really an issue, but f again, for a, big, for, for a bigger racetrack, this could be considered contamination, and the race... The bigger race series might have a bit of an issue with yeah. it, so... So just an honorary mention, but not in the top five. Not in the top five. Hey, uh, Jeek, why don't we just put concrete barriers all the way around the edge of the track and stop them going off? Well, as you know, that is a very common question that we get, especially on YouTube. And the reason for it is that the wall, which is our concrete barrier, is on a straight bit of track. It is completely optional. You don't have to drift into it or near it, really. Whereas if we put a wall around here, mm. It's on the corner, it's where people make mistakes. This is a grassroots venue and we just can't, we can't justify writing off people's cars. Two reasons, one, we don't want to hurt people. Absolutely don't want to hurt no. people. And two, it's bad for business, to be honest with you. If somebody comes in here, crashes their car, and then their car's broken for six months while they repair it, then it means they can't come back and do some more drifting. And we want people to do as much drifting as possible. So putting walls here, for that reason, and the reason that we do use the track and the venue for other for other things like supercar experiences and stuff, then it just doesn't make sense and it's never going to happen. So please don't leave that as a comment, but do leave a comment. That's it. I think that's the main reasons that people hate drifting. Not yeah. people. Racetracks hate drifting, or most of them. And people, you might be thinking, this is very similar to the other video that you've done. And it is, but a lot of people in that video were... One, suggesting that we were complaining about the issues on our own personal track, which we're complaining about, but to illustrate a point yeah. that the reason that other tracks won't put up with this shit. Like, we put up with it because it's part of our business model and we don't really have a choice. <laughs> but other tracks, they don't need you. They don't need your couple of grand. Like, they're doing big money on big race weekends and they don't need a bunch of, 
you know, potentially disrespectful people who are going to do a burnout down their main road to come and wreck their shit in the way that you've seen. And again, you know, people were saying, oh, water damage, it's water that's digging it out. The water's ran through there now, but that is not water. Nope. The other thing they were saying was, stop your fucking moaning <laughs> and stop talking too much. We've had another video where all we've done is talk. Oh, leave us a comment down below if you hate listening to us talk. <laughs> You're so Scottish from Scotland. <laughs> stop being so fucking Scottish! Uh, yeah. Where was I? I fucking lost my point now. Oh dear. What point was I even trying to make? I don't think you had one. I've never had a point, really, let's be honest. Basically, is if you want to go to a drift track, be respectful, be prepared to tidy up after yourself, you know, if if you're going to be painting lines on the track then you need to have a plan to get them back off. If you are going to be dirt, dropping down onto the dirt, or it wouldn't even be dirt on a proper track, it would be grass. If you're going to start wrecking that grass, you better have a budget in order to replace it, or they are not going to have you back. So, yeah, be sound, don't be a dick, buy a sticker. <laughs> Like that, like that. I like that, I enjoyed that. Don't be a dick and just like have a bit of common sense. Like you might get somewhere once and if you just go bananas and wreck the place then they're not going to have you back. No. So if you want to run a drift day at a drift track we suggest you watch this video and our previous one before you go and commit it because there's a lot more to running a drift day than just getting a bunch of people to turn up with cars and wrecking the place and then going home and counting all your hardcore profits. Thanks, GXC. Been good to hear how the track has been, especially just just after the BDC, so the most sort yeah. of crazy weekend that the track has to suffer. Yeah, so do subscribe, thumbs up, share, all those other things. Thank you very much to all of our new subscribers that have been coming in over the last couple of months. Uh, if you want to see any all these videos before everybody else, get onto our Patreon. Uh, I think it's ten dollars a month to get access to our videos before everybody else. So get on there and. We'll see you later.